podcast. Welcome to another episode of Over Us. Today, we have a real estate extraordinaire, very special guest. Uh, we have Niall Lundgren on the show. No, no relation to Dolph Lundgren, I don't think. I'm not sure, but we got Niall here. He's a Bravo TV star, uh, a member of Sir Hunt. Every, I mean, he's wearing the hoodie. He's repping the hoodie. We were just talking about how cool that was. It seems like you just do so many things. We were, we were doing a bit of research on you. You're like, I don't know if you sleep. I'm unsure if you sleep, but Niall, thank you so much for being on the show. Um, for those who may not know you, can you get, kind of give us your elevator pitch? Who is Niall Lundgren? Yeah, no, I really appreciate you for having me on the uh, the podcast. I, I'm a big fan of both you guys, and uh, it's just an honor to be here to start. Um, you know, my name is Niall Lundgren. I currently work at Sirhan. I've been in the real estate business for 14 years. Um, I played football in college. I went to Trinity College in Hartford, Connecticut. I double majored in English creative writing with a concentration in poetry and wow. Hispanic studies. So I speak um, fluent Spanish. That was a decision wow. I made. Um, in, in, in college to my, my Spanish teacher said, you have a thing for communication. You know, you should probably learn another language. And I was like, I don't know if I should do that. And he's like, well, how about you live in Spain for a little bit? There's a lot of girls out there. And I was like, all right. And then he, he duped me into majoring in Spanish. Um, but as soon as I finished with Trinity College, I uh, moved to New York City immediately. One of my best friends bought a house out there. And um, it was the no money down situation. And you know, right as everything was crashing, you know, he, he picked, he picked up a house, his house ended up being underwater. Um, but I had a free basement to sleep in New York. Um, and I just knew I wanted to be on TV at some point. So I moved out to New York, um, was playing literally Mario Kart. After I, I played football show, I tore my shoulder, I was playing Mario Kart, just hanging out. Um, I moved basically in, uh, I think it was December of 2007. I moved to New York City. And I was sleeping on an air mattress and the guy that sold my friend the house, obviously a big real estate guy. He was like, what are you doing here? I was like, I don't know. I'm going to be on TV someday, you know, figure it out. He's like, you should probably work in real estate. And I was like, okay. And uh, yeah, next day I started at his office at 8 a.m. He owned a hundred buildings in Bushwick and Bed-Stuy before Bushwick and Bed-Stuy were super cool and popping. Um, and I started my career out there just, just doing rental apartments for six, $700, um, these basement shitty um, apartments in Brooklyn. Um, and then, you know, I graduated, I sold my first building within like eight months, just, just calling people that I played football with and their dads. I'm like, Hey, there's a building, you should buy it. So I, I, I immediately sold something. And then I was like, Oh, maybe I should get my license. I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> you know, I didn't even, I didn't know what a commit, you know, commission structure. I didn't know that you had to be licensed. I was just literally out there acting on behalf of this owner. Um, so that was pretty wild way to start. And then from there, you know, I just went from one firm to another firm. I worked in commercial real estate. I started my first brokerage um, at the age of 28. I built that to about 30 agents myself, at which time I was recruited by Compass. Compass had probably 100 people at the company at the time. I think I was number agent number 182 the day I started. Compass was the day it moved from the name moved from Urban Compass to Compass. So that just to show you how early on I was. Now there's twenty five thousand agents across America at Compass. So I was literally in that first couple, you know, two hundred subsect of everybody. So I got to see amazing uh, growth. Um, I'm you know big fan of how Robert Refkin, you know, expanded the company, and it was just really cool to be on the inside of not only a great brokerage, but also a tech company. Um, most recently last year during the pandemic, 2020, we're in 21 now, uh, most people rode off New York City. Um, New York, there wasn't much to do out there. So I called a lot of my you know, bigger clients and said, you know, where are, we, where are we going? How are we doing this? And Miami seemed to be a good, good reason for a lot of my clients to, to go down there. Um, I sold an $18 million mansion on Sunset Island 4 in Miami Beach. Um, that, was a, that was a big one. I think my name really got on the map with a lot of different companies. Um, from that sale, a lot of companies started calling me. I don't need to name names, but I was recruited heavily by CEOs of major companies. And, um, you know, when I got a call from Ryan Sirhan, you know, I was like, okay, 
this is this is where I want to be. And I know Sir Hand, I was agent like 25 at Sir Hand. And I always had Ryan um, kind of on, on a list of like, I'd love to work with him at some capacity. I think our our styles vibe very well. Um, I actually got on a Bravo TV show in 2019, which aired in 2020. And I told Ryan this in my interview. I said, the reason why I got on the TV show is because you already exist in Million Dollar Listing but I wanted to get onto Bravo in any capacity. So I joined Camp Getaway. I was cast in that show, which is a show about an adult getaway camp for the weekend. And I did that. Um, and I did it to get into the Bravo family and to establish myself there as like a baseline. And then from there, once I'm in, I knew I could maneuver up. And since then I've been on million dollar listing without even starting with Ryan, just on my own merits. And then when I was having a conversation with Ryan, it was just, you know, supernatural. And I was like, look, I did all this just to show it for the moment that I would meet you and we're meeting and like, look at what's going on. And he's like, bro, that's awesome. Let's do it. You know? And it yeah. just felt very, very natural for me. And, you know, I don't know if many people have been following my progression, but, you know, for the last year I've been on a tear and it, it, it's, yeah. I attribute a lot of it to my success, you know, during the pandemic, when most people were like scared and not sure what to do, I was, I was just very aggressive because I knew that's when money was going to be made. There's going to be scared money. And then there's going to be people that actually like hunker down and, and get to business. And that was my decision. And since then, it's just been kind of lights out. So that's my, that's my elevator pitch. If that helps, I know it might've been a little bit long, but that's. Yeah. That's you went to the, stuff. went to the fucking CN tower with that. Um, <laughs> that was a hell of an no, yeah. uh, elevator pitch. I think that ends the podcast. Yeah. Right there. I don't think no, that was that, was that was the best elevator pitch. We've Matt, can I ask one question real quick yes. before we continue? Yes. So I took a, a lot away from that, obviously. But who yes. who is your go to uh, player in Mario Kart? I think that's kind of what I yeah. what I want to focus on. Uh, you know, to be honest, the that fucking question is awesome. Um, I <laughs> love you. Donkey Kong or Bowser because interesting the big the big too fellas. slow. They're too slow. Yeah. No, no, no. They have the top speed at the top, but their, their acceleration is not that good. So that if you get them going and you don't fall often, those guys are the best <laughs> and you can bump people. So like right. I love driving and like bumping. People. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. I'm always Mario. Eric, you're, you're Mario. All yeah. right. So you have a higher Soft. acceleration speed. <laughs> yeah, <it's> just... <laughs> toad. I, toad has toad is qu quickest and most agile. Yes, oh, he yeah. gets yes. he gets blown up easily by the uh, the shells and everything. But yeah, oh, but if Bowser's coming over with Toad, he's he's right off Rainbow Road. He's fucked. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. True. Okay, well, yeah. Okay, anyway. so <laughs> yeah, back to the program. Um, it's interesting you say all that stuff about Ryan because as we were doing a little bit of research on you, we were like, oh, this is this is cool. It's like very similar stories. It seems that you and Ryan had. So did you when you got into the industry was was Ryan already on TV? Like, had, had you known him the whole time and like seen his progression and known one day you, you wanted to hook up and meet? Great. Another great question. So um, for two. Ryan and I started real estate about the exact same time. Yeah. So one of Ryan's friends from college, he went to Hamilton College. I went to Trinity College. So they're both mini Ivy, NESCAC, New England Small College Athletic Conference. They're all like the, these New England colleges, Bates, Bowdoin, Amherst. So one of my really good friends from prep school, I went to Kent School, um, actually became a good friend of Ryan's at Hamilton. So we kind of had a connection. So when I first started watching Million Dollar Listing and it first came out, I was like talking to my friends and I figured out, oh, this guy, Ryan Sirhan's from Hamilton. I'm from Trinity. That's interesting. The show is very interesting. I'd like to do it. I watched the first two seasons pretty religiously. Um, and I'm going to be honest. I don't know if I've ever said this publicly, but after those two first seasons, I personally boycotted it. Oh. I said, fuck why? this. <laughs> I said, fuck what this. Changed? I'm, not, I'm not watching it. And the reason why I said that is because I thought it should be me. Right. And I right. said, I'm going to work. And I'm not going to spend my time consuming other people's content. I said, yeah, I can, you know, watch Million Dollar Listing. Because everyone asks about Million Dollar Listing, especially in New York. Oh, what about this? And I'm always like, yeah, it's great. Yeah, I know those guys. Because I've done deals with, with all of them, you know. So I, I always just kind of play it that way. But it, it, for me, it's just been like, I'm going to boycott it until I'm there. And I, to be honest, I, the, I, I don't even watch it. 
I, I just watched, you know, I was at, you know, what's really funny is I filmed after I was on my TV show, Camp Getaway, I filmed um, for uh, season nine, episode one of Million Dollar Listing. It was right before the pandemic happened, like a week before. I forgot it even happened, okay? And then I'm at Sirhan watching the Million Dollar Listing premiere. And then all of a sudden it's on TV and everyone's like looking at me and I'm like, what? And they're like, you're on TV. And I'm like, what? I didn't even know. Like no one told me. I just, and you know, the pandemic, you forget about a lot of things. So like I had no idea that I was on TV. So it was just like, it was an awesome moment for me to like, to see all these things happening and million dollar listing. And then like, I'm with Ryan, I'm working with them. And now I'm also on TV by my own merit. So like me boycotting it in my sense, not saying I don't like anybody, but it was a personal decision to say, you don't, you're not there yet. You can do it. I believed in myself. Now go focus your time, effort, and energy so that you can eventually get there and look at this now. I mean, it's like, you know, I, I feel you on that. That's exactly what I'm doing. I'm boycotting Lil Dicky right now because <laughs> he, you know, 2015, 16, I was utterly obsessed with him. And then of course he comes out with the show Dave and it's like, he's in my head. So I haven't watched it, even though I'm a huge Lil Dicky fan, because I'm so jealous of this show and everything that he's creative. He's Jewish. He loves sports. Like everything that he is doing is something I would want to do instead. I'm just making real estate memes, but I, I feel you there on the boycott. <laughs> Memes yeah. are hilarious, though. I'm gonna give yeah, you a lot yeah, of credit. Thanks. I watch it. I watch them all the time. I send them to all my friends. And I think they're hilarious. So thank you. To you on that. So but I go. totally respect your 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 thought process there, and I share the same one. Yes. Yeah, Eric and I have also been trying to get on Million Dollar Listing for like yeah. five years. We're they're, boycotting everything. <laughs> yeah, we're boycotting that too. They haven't returned our emails once. I don't know That's what fine. the hell. I th- I don't think we're handsome enough. I don't know what it is, but. <laughs> I mean, have you seen that? even the, the just the extras on that show? Oh I know. God, yeah, it's a good looking crew. Just like just like someone walking on the sidewalk. I'm like, oh, yeah. really? So I, <laughs> yeah, mean, I mean, look, it's not all of New York, but, you know, there are some good looking people here. And I think the looks definitely help. Yeah. So, no. when, so going back to this TV uh, dream that you had. So was real estate kind of a like jumping off point for you to get into TV? Cause you said right off the bat, like once you graduated, finished playing football, TV was kind of your number one goal. So is real estate yeah. an avenue for that or did it just happen to coincide with it? You know, it just happened. Um, when I interviewed with Bravo, for example, they said, why should you be on TV? And I said, well, when I was eight years old, I used to sit in front of my family and eat hot peppers and make faces and everyone would <laughs> laugh at me. My grandmother always said to me, you're going to be on a soap opera one day. You're going to be on TV. Soap operas are essentially, she's older, she's passed now, but soap operas are now the reality TV, essentially, right? So she she knew it. And I told Bravo when I met with the executives, I said, I believe I'm going to be on TV because my grandmother told me when I was young and I've always believed it. So my senior year at Trinity, when I played football, um there i created a vlog so i have these videos like a, a 10 10 video series of every week i would produce not only would i play football and go to school and do all these things but i would stay up at night and i would produce these videos that i would drop on facebook and youtube when facebook and youtube were brand new and then i would poke the other team's quarterback the whole you know like you i would do that to girls yeah poke poke them. yeah yeah, yeah. Of course. Poke, poke, poke. Yeah. So I would put these videos out that's like, hey, I'm coming after you. We're going to beat you. Bah, bah, bah. And then I'd poke them and I have it all running on YouTube and Facebook. And I created a lot of buzz by doing that. And I realized by doing that, that marketing works through video. And I learned that in 2007. So with what my grandmother told me when I was eight, then what I saw by producing those vlog style videos 14 years ago, I realized that like I would walk around campus and I was a celebrity. I mean, everyone wanted to be in my videos. This is before vlogging was even a thing. And I recognized that there was real power in making video content. So I became obsessed with it. So when I moved to New York, I knew I wanted to be on TV, but I needed to find a way to help me survive. And when I got proposed with the opportunity to work in real estate, what I liked about it is that I could kind of make my own schedule. I have, I have a log of videos 
from 2003 go, by year. You could click into any year and you have photos and videos. And I've been logging everything. I've been preparing for my feature film documentary 10 part series like Michael Jordan for about 20 years now. Wow. <laughs> I'm insane, right? I have it categorically, you know, done. I've been, I've been doing it. But real estate was not something that I was like, I'm going to be a real estate agent. It was just, to be honest, it was dumb luck and chance. And I, I, I did my first deal like that. I, on my first showing, I sold a building in six. I was like, wow, I can communicate. I can do these things. This seems like a path for me. Plus, I didn't have to be locked into a, a desk. So I could, I could go and meet people for lunch. And I really focused on my network at the beginning because I knew my network, whether I was in real estate or not in real estate, would be something that would help me in the future, right? And I really focused on that. So to answer your question, no, it really wasn't real estate. It was just, it was a dumb luck scenario that I think just worked out um, in, in my favor. Did you start producing videos for real estate? vlogs and everything the second you started real estate too because i know you have a huge digital media presence now on instagram and youtube but did you kind of translate what you were doing on the football team and producing those videos to your first couple of years in real estate so the the long and short answer is yes um i have probably a thousand unlisted youtube videos my youtube used to consist of every apartment i've ever been into and to be honest i would never let anybody see the apartments that I started today, right? Because it's bad, really bad. Maybe I'll send you guys a link after just as a fun thing. But like, I was looking at the grimiest of the grimiest apartments. And I, I didn't know any better, to be honest. I was young. The stock market crashed in 08. I had no clue. You know, I was just like, <laughs> da, 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 like not even no idea, you know? So, um, I don't know. It's just really, really funny how it kind of all worked out. I've seen some uh, New York apartments on TikTok. So yeah. they're, they're like walking through and like literally you'll walk in. There'll be like a fridge. And then beside the fridge <laughs> the is fridge, like, though. yeah, not even a full fridge. Like a and then like the, the bathroom's there. There's like no stove. There's like bars on the windows. Yep. First floor. People could <laughs> rob you at any time. <laughs> It's like it looks terrifying. Ten I mean, grand. some of those. Yeah, yeah it's, it's that bad. I mean, <laughs> Toronto's getting that bad too now. Um, I feel like Toronto's like our New York. Canada's New yeah. York. Um, I don't think it's as expensive, but I'm not sure. The um, I wanted to, to touch on the the Spanish. Um, has that played a big part in your success in real estate? Do you have a lot of uh, Spanish clients now? Yeah. No. So. Uh, I would say no. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't have a whole bunch of people that are exclusively Spanish speaking in my career. I've done three deals where the other person has not spoken English. Okay. So pure deals in Spanish, three of them. Yeah. It's not a lot if you amortize it. Um, I I do take pride in that. I also know that my ability, for example, um, one of my agents, his name is Stephen Marvin. Uh, he he got a listing pitch at 845 United Nations Plaza, apartment 47D. We currently have that apartment in contract. The owner is a retired doctor. He's moving to Columbia. His family's down there. He's doing the whole thing. And Stephen, I, you know, I don't really tell people that I speak Spanish. We're like trying to win the pitch. And he's debating between us as brokers or other people as brokers. And he mentioned that he was going to South America. And I was like, Tú español? and I just hit him with it. And we had a, a full-blown two minute conversation in Spanish and Steven, who's my agent was like, <laughs> like, what the hell is going on? And then afterwards we leave, he's like, what was that? I'm like, oh yeah, I speak Spanish. And I think that's the most hilarious part about me is because I actually spend a lot of time thinking and, and learning and doing research and making sure that I'm prepared for moments. And then when I have that moment, like I speak Spanish to an owner and that's what got us the deal is because I was able to connect with him on that level that that's what's beautiful about it because i connected with him and i got the listing and i didn't really tell people so i always kind of play just a little bit dumber and then i'm all about like surprising and they're like whoa and they're like blown away even my agents that work for me are like what the hell and i'm like yeah there's more where that came from just keep keep get keep bringing more that there's more languages more where that came somewhere. from yeah. yeah i got french and italian in my back pocket too um yeah 
So you have a team, yep. uh, like as a part of Sir Hunt, you have a, a team. Yep. And how many members are on your team? So uh, right now I have three agents, three junior agents. Um, I'm in the process of hiring um, an operations manager and um, another junior agent. She's a fully Spanish speaking. Um, she's from the Dominican. I'm trying to bring her on too. Um, so yeah, I'm just really trying to have like, so like I'm good at Spanish and then she's really strong in Spanish. So my goal is to bring her on and then do multilingual content. Oh, cool. Because I think that really just, sep that's, you know, I'm always thinking about how can I really separate? So like, yeah, have I done a lot of deals in Spanish? Not necessarily, but, you know, there are different markets where you can gain traction. You can gain traction in the Middle East, right? Arabic, you can gain, gain traction in, in Asia with all the different languages or, it, you know, in South America with Spanish or, you know, in parts of Spain or Europe, right? Um, or just English in America. But like, it's a global world we live in. So the more that, you know, I can get out there and do different types of content, you know, even though it might be challenging, you know, I'm all about the, 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 the challenge and the opportunities that, that present itself with overcoming those challenges. Yeah. Smart. And you are a content machine, YouTube, <laughs> Instagram, you're all over the place, different types of shows, yeah. podcasting, um, so does Sirhan Studios or your brokerage, do they offer all this digital creation help or are you just doing this on your own coming up with all these concepts and everything's so high quality too. So I always wondered how that worked. If they're facilitating this, it's like a combo or, or how it works. So that's a great question. Um, so we got breaking news here. This is new year. And this, I, I, can you just explain Eric? This is crazy. New year, new us, Matt. Yes. Yeah. Do you? Want to make 2022 your best year yet, Matt? Yeah. Yeah, I do. I, I mean, everybody does. Right. We're talking next level, triple your transaction volume, crushing the competition, kicking ass, closing deals, and taking names kind of success. Ooh, yeah, I want that. Yeah. That's what happens when you partner with Boomtown, the number one rated real estate CRM. It's got the tools and tech you need to generate and convert conversation-ready leads. To check out Boomtown and see how you can score up to $1,000, that's a grand in incentives. If you sign up in the month of December, visit boomtownroi.com slash overask. That's boomtownroi.com slash overask. Number one CRM in the game. Let's go. Yes. Sirhan has Sirhan Studios. And Sirhan Studios is the media arm of the Sirhan, the brokerage. So anytime that I get a listing, or a listing, I do the listing video, it's done by Sirhan Studios, okay? Now, you might see me in different places. Like, I think you mentioned, um, like, for example- uh, Door knocking uh, video. Not even, you said Instagram and YouTube, but if you look at my analytics on TikTok, for example, in the last 60 days, I'm gonna just show it to you so all the, all the viewers can see it. I mean, that's just me on TikTok and you can see the, the steady growth rate. Parabolic. So, yeah, I'm literally going bananas. So if you think I'm a content machine, <laughs> I'm not even between us. I don't even fucking worry about Instagram. That's like old news for me. I'm just maintaining my brand and pushing the videos. What I'm doing from the long form video that Sirhan Studios gives us is I'm using an in-app editor called Splice. And I'm taking that one video that's two minutes, three minutes long that Sirhan Studios professionally does. And then I'm chopping it up to eight to 10 second videos. And every part of the video is a separate video unique on TikTok. I mean, yesterday on TikTok, I made 15 posts. Like I am literally- You, you posted 15, 15 times yesterday? Yeah, and, and the, five times already today. Oh my God. I like, I am not even like, that's why you guys are like machine. Oh, a content machine. And you didn't even mention TikTok. Like I'm not even, I'm not even trying on Instagram. I'm just like, so like, you know, last couple of videos I did the vlog. That was something I do on my own is the vlog is that one. Let me just see. Then the one before that was Sirhan studios where I'm on top of the roof and I'm like, yo, I already sold it. Right. So like after you sell something, Sirhan gives you the opportunity to film a video based around Sirhan Studios and how great of an experience it was and how the video helped. So that was the one where I was hanging off the roof, like this one where I'm hanging off the roof. Yep. Right, the, that was what they produced. This, this other video that I did, the listing video, that's all them. 
but then the other stuff, the reels, you know, that's all me, you know, and, and, and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm all about it, man. I mean, my, if you sit in a, in a team meeting with me, I mean, all I'm doing to my agents is I'm like more fucking content, more. I don't care what you do. By the way, on TikTok, it should be imperfect because the more imperfect it is, the more people are going to comment and trash you. And as a result, you get more comments and, and views in, in action and the algorithm favors that. So like I intentionally sometimes on TikTok because I'm putting out so much volume, I'll have a little error in there. And I'm like, I'll keep it. I'll keep it. And then people are like, you spelled this wrong. And then there's like huge thread about how I spelled it wrong. And I'm like, ha, got him. The, the TikTok commenters take stuff so much more seriously than Instagram. And I don't know if it's because on Instagram, my audience is more accustomed to my voice and they kind of understand what's going on. But when I post yeah. stuff to TikTok, like a fake text conversation or me reacting to something, they take it a hundred percent seriously. Maybe it's a younger audience. So is, is that part, is that part of your strategy too? Like you like TikTok because of the growth, maybe it's more fun, vertical video, but are you trying to attract people to your real estate business, like younger clientele or what, like why TikTok over Instagram? Well, two reasons. Um, one, Instagram, your growth is capped, right? For me personally, like I saw a fake account of myself, official Niall Lunger that had 31,000 views or 31,000 followers. I have 7,500. Yeah. So obviously they like, bought followers or did something, or I'm just doing a shitty job at Instagram. And <laughs> my fake accounts are getting- Just doing a better job than you are. Yeah. Yeah, followers <laughs> than me. Maybe that's the case, but like that really made me think, right? But on the TikTok side, I think why TikTok is so important right now is because your brain is programmed to watch things in real life video, right? We're not sitting around the fire 2000 years ago, reading text or looking at still images. So our brains are wired to TikTok. And yeah, Instagram's great. They have TV and reels and this and shop. It's too much. It's getting washed out. I mean, look, it's always going to be there to a degree, but like, it's just for brand management, in my opinion. I also don't have as much fun um, as I do on TikTok. And TikTok is me being me. I'm saying hilarious things. I'm being very excitable. And, you know, say, just doing, if you look at it, you'll see it. You're like, holy shit, this is, that's where Niall's really going off. And then I'll like, I'll post a TikTok video to my Instagram story, which is a subliminal message. Like, you should be following me on TikTok, you know? And another reason why I like TikTok is because it is a younger generation, but that younger generation is quickly moving to an older generation. And I know a lot of my people that five years ago or two years ago were like, I would never do TikTok. That's just kids dancing. And these are older people, 40, 50s. They're doing it. And I'll give you an example. Ryan, for example, posted um, the penthouse at 432 Park that he has listed for $169 million dollars. His first three showings from that came from his TikTok post. If you get 5 million people looking at it, it doesn't have to be the end buyer, but it's the end buyer's granddaughter who says, this is nice, grandpa. And then they're like, oh, let's go see it, right? So as much as people want to write it off and say that it's a kid thing, like, I don't see that happening. And another thing is with the whole advent of like the crypto space, and I, I've been buying crypto for a number of years now, and I have a a lot of holdings. And I know a lot of people in the space, all my clients in the crypto NFT space. And I work with, I'm moving my business. I did a lot of finance, but my business is, is shape is shifting. It's moving a lot towards crypto. So I'm doing a lot. I mean, I have at least, I mean, I have five calls like this week with, with crypto people looking for apartments. And, you know, I, I, I host a lot of gatherings. I do a lot of things, you know, NFT wise. So like I've become the guy, but I'm also in real estate. So when they need a house, they find me. But those people are on TikTok and they're on Twitter. They're not, they don't really care too much about Instagram. They think Instagram's played out, you know? So like for me, I'm always saying, yes, I have Instagram. I'll manage that. I'll, I'll pump content. You can say I'm a content machine on that, which is fine. But I'm also cranking out Twitter. Twitter is where I have most of my crypto talk. So if you follow me on Twitter, it's crypto, 75%, 25% real estate. If you, if you look at my TikTok, I'm pumping out 10, 15 videos a day. Instagram, one or two posts every other day. Um, and then YouTube, I'm trying to do that once, you know, every two weeks is, is have another YouTube video. Up. So it's a lot, you know, it's, it's Sirhan Studios definitely helps. They definitely are creative. They're fantastic. But I do a lot of extra things on my own. 
because I, I do recognize the value of marketing with video, which I found back in 2007 when I was in college doing my, my, my weekly vlogs. So is that what you would tell people who are kind of maybe new to creating content or feel like they don't have the time or overwhelmed, like create one piece of longer form content and then be able to splice it up and put it on all platforms in different ways? 100%. I mean, I even splice up um, my content that goes on TikTok. Well, that could be on TikTok, that video, but that same video can be on a reel and that same video could be on YouTube shorts. Do you guys know about YouTube shorts? Yeah. yeah. Tell, tell the like people at home will. about YouTube shorts because I think a lot of people don't even know how to upload, upload them yet. And it's vertical video on YouTube, right? Same shit. I'm mm. not, I'm just, I download my TikTok video. I go here, I upload it with hashtag. how do you, how do you upload a YouTube short on you just on the app, right? right. And you but hashtag you, you shorts like, or something. Yeah, you hashtag shorts or is it a different category? Uh, it's just, you just go here, create a short. It says create a oh, short okay. here and you just click it. And I just literally create a short. I'll do one right now. This is how much time it's like everyone's like oh it's so much so much stuff and i'm like okay well let me just do one right now this one here it is this is the last thing i did to tiktok so okay, this is a tiktok that he is uploading to shorts for the listeners who aren't watching so next here, and what do you what do you title this and do you use hashtags in shorts um do i use hashtags yeah for youtube shorts uh yes okay so I try and always use it. Like I don't have, I don't have the following so far um, that I want. So I'm, I'm going to use hashtags until I get that. And then mm -hmm. once I get a critical mass, then I test without hashtags to see, okay, I've been getting, you know, my TikTok videos, I get in the last couple of videos, 17,000, 17,000, 10,000, 25,000, 20, like I'm getting, I'm hitting a critical, I'm hitting 10 K plus every time now. So what I've, what I've done with my videos is I've, I've followed trends and trajectories and then I watch and then I'll drop a video that doesn't have hashtags just to see where that puts me. Are people finding me through hashtags? Are people finding me through the audio that I'm using, which is also considered a type of hashtag? So it depends, but I'm always like testing, like, does this work? Does that work? And if you see me, like I just hired a new agent, her name is Samantha. And I was like, look, you're going to shadow me for a day. And she was like, you don't have a moment. Like, I'm not taking downtime. Yeah. If, if I'm taking, if I'm out showing apartments, I'm taking a video of it. And then when I'm in the cab going to the next place, I'm on TikTok putting that one, I'm not editing the video. It's a one swipe video. And then I'm putting a hot trending viral video to it, using a couple hashtags, sending it, getting it out there, then taking it, putting it in shorts. Maybe that goes to my Instagram story. So by doing the work once, I'm then just repurposing it throughout. And it looks like I'm everywhere, but I'm doing the work once or one long form and then just chopping it up and then dishing it. That's a lot of, there you go, guys. I mean, that's, <laughs> holy fuck. Hey guys, Do you schedule any of this stuff out? Nah. It's just all It's all in all his fucking head, man. Yeah. No, nah, I don't schedule all this fucking, Do you Also, get... okay. Go ahead, man. No, no, I just had, no, 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 you still go because I'm going to change it subject a little okay um do you ever get content burnout are you ever sick of posting and i know a lot of people always reach out to me and say like how do you post so much content i'm doing so much real estate stuff i can't i don't have time for both so yeah i mean how, how do you do it i guess just what as i finished i just did three hashtags uh agents of sirhan sirhan because it's a popular thing so like i'm not trying to say what building i'm in or whatever yeah. All right. That's uploaded. Yeah. All right. So, sorry. Your question was, is there burnout? Yeah. Okay. Do you get burnout? And I mean, does it interfere with your real estate follow-up ever? Uh, you know, my real estate's priority, right? My, my follow-up is definitely priority, but 80% of real estate is marketing. Yeah. So what's a bigger priority? Getting that email out at 502 or 508. Those people could wait in my opinion, you know, I'm not at a point in my career where I need to be hyper responsive to, to win leads. People want to work with me because they understand the business. You work with me, you're going to get the business. What that means is I'm wearing a suit. I'm wearing a tie. I know what I'm doing. And I'm going to get you the best possible deal possible. And I'm going to fight for you. And you're going to be very, very happy. 
That's the business. And if you don't want that and you want to go somewhere else, that's fine. But when you get that from me, I'm going to give you everything, but I can't be totally responsive at all times. I have a team of agents. I'm working on 10, 15, 20 deals at once, maybe. You know, I just did my year end review at Sirhan. Um, you know, most people have good years. I mean, my team has closed about 55 deals this year and I joined in April. I mean, a lot of those are rental yeah. deals because we have rental projects, right? But I mean, volume. I am pumping out volume in content. I am pumping out volume in conversations with new leads. I am pumping out volume in terms of deals, in terms of teaching my team how to scale and create systems so that I don't want people thinking about what the next step is. Look at the sheet. That's the next step. This is the email template for this. And the beautiful thing is, is I had my own templates. I had my own training guide. I wrote a 200 page training manual when I had my own brokerage when I was 28, teach everyone how to do the business. The great thing now is I don't even have to do any of that. I just use the sell like Sirhan course. It's better, you know, yeah. it's, you know, it's optimized. So I'm all about you. Like if, if you're at Sirhan and you're not utilizing those templates and those things, or if you're an agent in, you know, you have a sell like Sirhan course and you're not utilizing it, you're doing yourself a disservice. Like it's out there. It's easy to use, get it, use it. And it's going to be a lot easier and you're going to close more business because of it. Yeah. Suit. Ty, now, do you think if me and you went into a listing appointment, who do you think would win the listing? Well, it depends. You know, it <laughs> depends. Um, I, I feel <laughs> obviously I think very strongly of myself. How tall are you now? Six foot one. Okay. I'm five I'm foot nine. You're a presence. Yeah. I'm a presence. <laughs> okay. I also look people dead in the eye and I'm like, I'm going to sell this right now and by the way you want views i'll get you views i, I do that views. too yeah and sometimes Boundaries. i have a mustache and when i have a mustache <laughs> i know the mustache is hilarious when i have Where a mustache go? did you <laughs> shave it post november no 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 i i just shaved it sometimes it just looks kind of off you know have to yeah rejuvenate Gotta maintain that yeah thing. yeah i mean it, you know you look younger thank you you're welcome <laughs> thank you yeah i feel younger um okay well that's i mean you can say you you could say you. Yeah, um, I mean, look, I'm confident. I would say. Okay, I mean, I'm five nine. I have I have two inch heel boots though. I get I get only boots. I wore them with Sir Ant uh, in October when I was there with Sir Ant and, and Talia in Boston. Uh, okay, cool. Yeah, so it gives me more of a presence for sure. I think I do very well now. I think I do very well. Uh, well, but, I I think you would too. <laughs> I guess we're gonna we, let's do it. Let's try it. Let's try it. Next time I get a listing pitch, I'll call you in and be like, look, this guy's going to try too. <laughs> this guy's going to, I'm going to bring on competition. Yeah. For this yeah, yeah. Appointment. Yeah, I like that actually. That's, I, yeah, that's I'm, say, right right I'm so confident. You know what? I got gonna... Josh Altman here. He's going to be right next <laughs> to me too. Choose between the two of us. That's Quick hilarious. question also, has Sirhan ever mentioned us? Does he like us? Has he, you know, does he ever say anything about the broke agent or Matt? Just curious uh, about the inner workings of the uh, Sirhan Studios. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that, you know, he's out there. And look, I'm not talking to him about, hey, who do you admire, you know, on Instagram? Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. Right, it's right. It's more right. of like, you know, Ryan is very, you know, he's one of the most dialed in human beings I've ever met. And I've had, right. I have a lot of respect for him. Yeah. His time is very efficiently blocked. So when you have two minutes, three minutes of Ryan, you know, you're not talking I'm about not us. Right. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking about like, hey, this deal, this, what's the answer? Okay, great. Okay. This, you know, like get into business and then yeah. looking for decisions. And then I'm going and acting on that immediately. That makes sense. Yeah. That I'd like sense. to imagine we pop up in his mind once a day. Every now and then. Yeah. <laughs> I imagine him do. sitting around with his entire team doing like a PowerPoint presentation about us yeah. and the content we're producing. I, I imagine like the you podcast. are like you are now in your, uh, in your meetings with your team, more fucking content. I imagine Sir Hant with the team saying more fucking co then fucking PowerPoint, turn it on. You got me dressed as fucking Freddie Mercury right on the screen. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's what I dream about at night. <laughs> uh, okay. Anyways, let's get to a, a not so rapid fire, Eric. I got some good ones for now from, okay. from what he's been saying. Okay. So this is a not so rapid fire round. Uh, it's not so rapid fire because we don't actually think of the questions. We just, we're just going to go. Okay, cool. we're just gonna try our best, but I, I, I have some good ones because, because of your background and stuff. So, sure. Here's my first one: greatest athlete of all time, Barry Sanders. There wow. You go. 
can you can you follow up? I'm oh curious. yeah, I'm happy to follow up. <laughs> you, so you mean to elaborate? Gary Sanders. He had no offensive line, and he rushed for two thousand yards every year. Not to mention, he also lost six hundred yards, seven hundred yards a year, and he still rushed for two thousand. The Retired second reason why I liked him is because whenever he scored a touchdown, he would just give the ball to the ref because he's been there before. So what that's about, why. What about Jerry Rice though? I mean, look, another superstar, but I just love Barry Sanders. I, okay. I just think his athletic ability, he could just go like this and the whole defense would ship Jerry Rice, blazing speed, catch every ball. I get it. But Barry Sanders had no offensive line and was just juking everybody. I mean, give me a break. Yeah. Barry Sanders by, okay. a, by a mile, if you ask me. Are you a now Lions just, fan too? I'm a Jet, you know, I'm a Jets fan. <laughs> okay. It's pretty embarrassing. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want Gary V to buy the Jets? Yeah. Yes, I'm a big fan of Gary V. So are we. Yeah. Friend of Do you the have show. any interaction with Gary V? I'm sure Ryan has, right? Uh, like, does he yeah. ever? Ryan has a lot of interactions with him, but I, I personally haven't had any interactions with him. Um, I've been listening to Gary V for four or five years now. Yeah, I mean, he's, same. He's a big inspiration. Why, you know, the same reason why we're all on this podcast is probably because we listen to, to Gary V. You guys are like, let's start a podcast. Let's dump content on the internet. I'm like, I'm already dumping content, dump more, you know, and look at us now. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's very clear that it works. So I'm a big very, Gary V fan. Yeah. I still have a follow-up to the, I've heard a lot of people answer this question. I want to know your response to people who say Tiger Woods is the greatest athlete of all time. I find that an odd choice, no doubt incredible but athleticism in golf i don't know if you can say greatest athlete of all time how do you feel about that i think the hardest thing to do in sports is hit a baseball right you think so, yeah 90 miles per hour with curve on it yeah i mean look golf is great i don't know i mean yeah he, he's dude tiger is insane and he's insane a, yeah he's a freak yeah i'm not gonna deny that but i'm also gonna say like athlete that that's just, where yeah what do you I how do you feel struggle. eric you're a big golfer how do you feel i, about I love thing? tiger woods and we're fresh off of the pnc tournament with him and his son charlie yeah was and good. seeing tiger come back after the accident and still rip it 280 down the fairway Dude, with he his, was doing know, like hook drives right yeah yeah he was playing a power fade he was hitting his stingers <laughs> i mean and he's he the guy's like you know six three completely jacked He's been winning tournaments since he was 17 no, years no old. No doubt. He's, he is, I, I just found it weird. Like of my generation, I'd say he was the most dominant and most, you know, fun, most fun athlete to watch. So I'd say Tiger yeah. Woods. I don't know if he's yeah. the best athlete, he would, but he's definitely one of the most dominant. Yeah. I yeah. mean, best athlete, you could say yeah, Jordan. I would say I mean, Michael, LeBron, I would say Michael Calvin Jordan. Johnson, as far as yeah. like just pure athleticism. 43, 44 inch vert, six, five. Yeah. Know, like, I'd yeah, say exactly. Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan or Tony Hawk? <laughs> Michael Jordan, I mean, you know, I, I, we all kind of grew up around the same time. Michael Jordan was was my idol. I mean, Barry he's Sanders, I think he's, he's just, just the fierce competitive nature of Michael. Like, yeah. do you, you know how many times he was the defensive player of the year? He wasn't just scoring 50 points a game. He was locking down the other person's, be, other team's best player. Like, What? Yeah. And everyone, that was when they were taking shots. I love you, LeBron, but you're kind of a, you're kind of soft, bro. Like someone touches you <laughs> and you're like, soft. wow. Dude, they I were love LeBron. Punching Michael Jordan and trying to kill him. Yeah. LeBron's yeah. become more and more insufferable as time yeah. has gone yeah. on. I'm not even, I'm not a huge basketball fan. I do love LeBron, but the Michael Jordan and Kobe, their mindset is like none other. And it's so inspirational to me, always. Like, fucking badass man they're just did like do you see that one level. with kobe where he got an argument with somebody and then the guy had the ball and he was like gonna yeah, throw matt, it out. matt, flinch. Barnes. matt yeah. barnes yeah and, and kobe didn't even flinch yeah. so badass i like to he's think like, i would do that kobe's too like, but i i wouldn't he's like what are you gonna do you're gonna throw it in my face i'm kobe bryant bro i don't care. Yeah, that, dude that to me is like wow you see Nate Diaz flinch at that guy in the crowd, yeah. and that guy literally basically threw up and threw his popcorn all yeah. over the place. Yeah. It was pretty funny. No, right, so let's, let's reel back into it. Yeah, let's reel back into a couple more real questions. Quick. Okay. So, um, aside from social media, like, what's the best way for you or a new agent to get clients from like a networking perspective? Is it going to parties? Is it sitting open houses? What sort of stuff should they do in the field? 
Yeah, I mean, look, the, the main thing you have to do, um, you know, I didn't necessarily do this is find a mentor, you know, find someone that you can learn from um, and, and gain experience off of. Uh, yeah, of course, if they have open, you know, open house options, that's a great place to meet direct buyers. But at the end of the day, you know, what I always say, like Samantha just started with me, um, I said, look, write down 200 people's names and call them and tell them you just landed your dream job. You're working at Sirhan. You want to be the number one real estate agent in the world. And can you help me by referring me to somebody who's looking to buy, sell, or rent, right? And if they say no, you challenge them. Be like, wait a second. I thought we were friends. You're telling me right now that you don't know anybody looking to buy, sell, or rent? I think you're a little lazy. Come on. And then you give them memory joggers. Right? You have, I thought you have we were doctor. friends. <laughs> yeah, doctors. Guilt them immediately. Aunts, uncles, sisters. Yeah. Fuck it. Not even in New York. Give anybody I could do, refer my friend out in LA to. Like, don't tell me you don't know anybody because there's three things that people look for in the adult world. Where do you work? Where do you live? And who are you dating? Right? Those are the three questions. So where do you live is a big one. So if you're telling me you don't know anybody in any of those situations, you're not having any fucking conversations with anybody. So what I would do if I was a new agent is just call your network. Call them. I don't care what market they're in. They might know somebody. You don't know that they don't that they might know or might not know, but you don't know until you call. So my big thing is, is personal phone time. You know, I spend a lot of time on the phone, 50, 60, hundred phone calls a day. I'm on the phone the, the whole time. God, <laughs> call, 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 While call. While you're posting TikToks and then chopping it up to reels. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. I have there a blast go. though. Yeah. There you go. Okay. This is my favorite question. We asked quite a few people. I love I love getting the answers. Okay. If you could choose one celebrity, not a real estate celebrity, an artist, uh, actor, something, who you could have join your real estate team because you think they would be the best realtor, the best person for the job, who would you choose? I mean, I would say DiCaprio and Wolf of Wall Street. It's our choice. That's, That's our choice. There we That's go. our choice. Is yeah. that your choice? Yeah. Literally, literally DiCaprio and Wolf of Wall Street. I said the exact same thing. Really? V verbatim. Yes. Did, oh yeah. my God. That's hilarious. You know, um, I was just in a movie. I was in my first movie um, like two weeks ago. And my role was to play like a guy who's a stockbroker, like in like the, the poster board where like the visualization of what they should be wearing and everything was DiCaprio in Wolf of Wall Street. That's sick. That's great. Just high energy. You know, I just love that, that passion, that grit, that let's fucking go get it. Like, yeah. I don't know if I could have anybody on my team, that's who I would have. Yeah. Agreed. Definitely. I'm a huge All DiCaprio right. fan. All right. Eric, Final question. Ahead. Since you're a crypto guy. Yeah. Besides Bitcoin, which crypto should you hold for the next five years? Besides Bitcoin and Ethereum. Ethereum. Oh, besides Bitcoin and yes. Ethereum? Oh, man. That's, that's it's going to be around for the next five years. It'll give you the uh, most I'd returns. Say, I'd probably say 50% of my portfolio is Bitcoin, you know, 30% is Ethereum, and then I have a bunch of altcoins. So which um, altcoin? Um, you know, I, I like Solana just because it's a DeFi, decentralized uh, finance protocol network. Um, there's a couple of other ones, like, like Ethereum, right? So there could be mm -hmm. applications like dApps, DeFi apps that could run on top of it, like selling NFTs, for example, or be having a, an exchange wallet. Um, there's one that I really like. It's called Glitch. Um, it's trading at like $1.40 as of this morning. Um, it's, it's a DeFi protocol like Sol uh, Solana and Ethereum. Um, it's going to have a, a wallet. It's like Uniswap, so you can swap uh, different... You guys know MetaMask and Uniswap yeah. and Pancake. So it has that included. You could buy and sell, you know, NFTs off of it. Um, the main net, which is like the, the whole network of it all is getting launched this month. So um, I'm just very bullish on it. I have a lot of, I have like a small tight knit, you know, friend group. I'm on the Telegram app. I'm, I'm watching all the trades. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited about Glitch. That's probably like my number one, like off to the side altcoin. Um, but, you know, and other things you cannot, you um, you know, overlook are the metaverse plays, you know, yep. you know, you have sandbox or mana. Uh, yeah, mana. I mean, I own a bunch of both of those and, and, and I'm really bullish on those. So I think those are going to be over the next couple of years, very, very big. And I like Ethereum because, you know, Facebook's, you know, meta is, is running on Ethereum, right. But, but other ones are going to be um, running on different protocols. So I think, you know, it's, it's going to be interesting, but, you know, I think the metaverse plays are like another really solid one. 
Matt, you're going to have right. to start getting into crypto because virtual real estate is going to become a thing. And you and I have I mean, an opportunity to become huge virtual real estate brokers because we have huge audiences. Yes. So fuck okay. actual real estate, virtual real estate brokers. Okay. Well, yeah, now you could have been fucking speaking Spanish there for the last five yes. minutes. I had no idea I know, what, I what was going on. <laughs> You got to get well, in this, man. I'm Look, telling you. Guys, seriously, if you want to talk about more stuff, I mean, I'm working on a lot of different projects with, with relation to crypto and NFT in real estate. NFT yes. interests me very much, uh, the more I'm seeing it. But you, if you watch Gary Vee, right? Do you watch, you, <laughs> yeah, you yeah all says, the time. Like, yeah. And NFT, your, your airline ticket is going to be an NFT. Yeah. You yeah. Know? So everything is going to be an NFT. And I, I just think that's the way it's going to go. There's a blockchain that it gets recorded in a public ledger. Like that's just how everything's going to like eventually once the real estate side can be worked out, because it's my understanding that real estate cannot be um, converted to like crypto or whatever, because if, if it is, it's considered a security. That's mm -hmm. why real estate hasn't really been tokenized yet. So we're going to have to kind of figure that out. But once that happens, I'd love to see title done in, 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 in blockchain. Mm -hmm. right mortgage recording you know uh blockchain that's where everything should go a public ledger not just in these random places all around the world that yeah. you have to dig into public let public or public records and go to the place and in new york you have to go down to dhcr department of community and housing renewal and ask for the records what yeah it's, it's so old school too yeah. bro like put it on the fucking ether scan blockchain it's registered forever you want the record here it is this is who owns it this is who sold it this is the debt this is the debt amount like that's where it should go it's just it's going to take time and you know i'd like to say that i'm i'm, I'm working with some people now to, to try and be at the forefront of that yeah real estate's always 10 years behind every industry it seems yeah. technologically i mean the mls is like the biggest piece of shit known to mankind and that's our number one search engine still. So you know that the MLS, there's no MLS in New York. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. It's just fucking free for all. It's right. like my friend whose dad who works in South Carolina, he sold over a billion dollars worth of real estate. My friend and his dad just purchased a place together. I sold it to them a couple blocks from where I live. Super happy about the purchase. As we're at the closing table, virtual closing table, my friend's dad says to me, How the fuck? do you do it? I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, that was, this was the hardest deal I've ever been a part of in my entire 40 year real estate career. Yeah. Like, how do you even make money out there? And I'm like, I don't know, man, it's just New York and there's red tape and it's, and it's hard, but like, that's why the people who are good stay in and the people who are no good just can't take it. And they're out pretty quick. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. I can't, I just learned that, that there was no MLS in New York. <laughs> It's fucking insane. Eric, oh. want to... Uh, yeah. So, Niall, where can the people find you? If you had to choose one platform where they follow you, where would it be? Oh, What's your man. username? You know, since you guys are so big on Instagram, I think it's an easy play to just move everyone to at Niall Lundgren on Instagram. Perfect. The same hashtag or the same handle also works for YouTube, TikTok, Twitter. I also have the same on everything. So, TikTok is another big platform. And if you follow me um, and like and subscribe on the YouTube channel. I'm doing all kinds of exclusive content. So my vlog, I don't really post my vlog on any other channel. I exclusively put it on uh, YouTube because I'm looking for that, those subs. Um, so I, I do have some content that is exclusive. And if you go there, mash that notification bell, hit that like button. I'll be making some dope content for you. Trust me. Oh, yeah. Spoken like a true fucking content YouTuber creator. right there. Yeah, smash seriously. that fucking we, like button. And by the way, if you're watching this on YouTube, smash our like button and subscribe to our channel. Please drop a comment. Yes. Too. No. Hey, if you drop a comment, <laughs> Not as strong as a pitch. <laughs> What'd yeah, you say? Drop. I what? said, if somebody drops a comment on your YouTube channel right now, I will comment back. Fantastic. There you go. Bam. Now, thanks so much for uh, being on the show. Thank you so much for having me, guys. I really appreciate it. It was great, great catching up, getting to know you guys better. Thanks for sure.